All right, gang, it's DJ. Welcome back to the channel. We've got an exciting video for you guys today. This is the very long awaited furniture bill for the DDJ Rev 7. So I just received my unit a couple days ago. I've been waiting over three months to get the unit. I pre-ordered it right when it came out, but the area I live in, it takes forever to get anything, which is a total bummer, but it was all made up for when I got my unit. I was super excited and now I'm ready to go. I'm doing everything I can as fast as I can, trying to get as comfortable as I can with this unit before I have my first gig. So stay tuned. This is a very exciting video I have for you guys today. We're gonna to be building out the DDJ Rev 7 into the furniture. Now, when it comes to building this into DJ furniture, the first thing you wanna do is find out how far you want the controller from your body. For me, this was about an inch from the bottom to my body and enough to put my tray for my laptop up top. So get it centered as best as you can and then measure from each side the same amount of inches so you'll know that you have a perfect center based on where you want it to be. Now, once we've got the controller outline, all we have to do is cut it out and then we'll start making some fine adjustments from there. I'm gonna do my best to give you guys the most details as possible. Definitely hit me up if you have any questions as there's so much in this video, so much that goes into building this that I'm sure I may skip a few details in the process. Now this is actually going to be my second build. As you've seen in my previous video, I built the similar design for my DDJ SX. So with this one, we're gonna be building off my improvements and this one will be better than the first one. After we get this cut out, we just want to measure to make sure we have it semi-accurate and also sand it down so we have no harsh edges because we're going to be putting this on our controller to test so we want to make sure to clean this off a little bit and make sure this is not going to scratch the controller. And also don't disregard the other piece that we just cut out because we're going to need that down the road. The wood I'm using here is 2x8 OBS wood. I use this because it's a lot lighter than plywood and I actually had them cut it right at Lowe's into four two by four feet sections. I kept two sections, one for the top, one for the bottom, and then I used the other two by four sections to chop up into smaller pieces. Now, the width of the furniture is four feet. The height is two and a half inches. So I cut a two and a half foot by four foot section for the width. So this is the front, front board. And then the sides are both two and a half by two feet. So I took another four foot section and I just cut it in half and that had the both sides created equally, which was perfect. If you also notice, one of the side of the OBS wood is this type of material that uses to hold it together and the other side is just the wood itself. So I chose to lose the wood part to, on the inside of the case and the top part with the texture, I wanted that to be the top because I love how it looked, how it feel with the ridges and the lines and it just separated it from other similar designs we've seen out there where the top is just plain so this will definitely be a one-of-a-kind furniture now after i got these pieces cut i sanded it all down and screwed it all together so we can get the top plate completed first now that that's completed we want to test it for fitment and if you notice i took two pvc pipes and i cut it two and a half inches and then i put the obs wood on top of that so that would simulate the width of the top piece and how it would fit on the controller so a, I can see if it would be flush mount. So here I'm putting it all together to get my basic design and see how everything's gonna look and go together and so I can plan to make any adjustments that's needed and as you see it works out perfect. So again this is the phase where you want to kind of test and make sure you have the level of flush mount that you want. Maybe you want your controller to be recessed a little bit, maybe you want it to be sticking out a little bit. So make the fine adjustments in height here and recut your wood if you need, but get these pieces down first before we start screwing anything down. Now once you have the sizes and everything that you want, I just use a couple 90 angle brackets here and I just start screwing it together. I use a total of 1690 angle brackets to fit this unit together and to hold the controller in place. And since I like to go overkill with everything, I went for the thicker brackets instead of the smaller brackets. So now that we got everything screwed down, we wanna start working on the riser that's gonna lift the controller up a little bit to get it flush mount with the top of the furniture. 
So we want to grab that piece we disregarded in the beginning. And since we were using this as a template to hold our controller, we want to outline it before we cut this up into pieces. So we want to, after the outline, we want to take it and measure out four inch by four inch squares. And these are going to act as the feet that are going to elevate the controller to get it flush with the top of the furniture. And after we do that, we're gonna cut a bunch of smaller pieces that we're gonna use to screw to the 90 inch angles. And this is gonna support the unit to make sure that it stays in place and doesn't move while it's inside the furniture. So again, I went overkill and I did two on each side. You could probably get away with one or maybe just two, but the more the merrier to be safer since I am going to make this live in this unit and I'm gonna be transporting this in and out of a trailer. This pretty much completes the template for the layout that we're going with. So now what I'm doing, I'm just gonna go through a little vinyl caulk and just fill in the cracks to give it smooth edges when I paint it. And then I'm gonna go through with some flat white paint and paint the inside and paint the outside of the unit. Now the reason I painted the interior is because I'm putting LED lights on the inside and we want all that light to bounce around inside there as much as possible. Plus when you lift up the lid, you want this to look as professional as possible. One thing to note when painting this, I use regular paint that I can put on with a brush because it spreads out more, you're gonna get more coverage. You don't have to do a ton of layers like you're gonna have to do if you use a spray can. So I would definitely go this route for your first couple layers and then you can go ahead and use the spray can if you want for the last layers. With the paint, I use flat white paint on everything, including the top, but when the top dried, I went back and used a high gloss paint for the top so it will be shiny when people are looking at it. After the painting was completed, I used some drawer liner to put on top of where the feet are gonna go. So this will help with vibrations and so the bottom doesn't get scratched. When I did my last build, I cut the inside a little bit wider so I can run the wires right from the front of the controller and straight up. This one, I'm gonna be running it out of the back of the unit and I'm gonna be covering the wires with white wire loom so it matches the controller so it'll almost look like they're hidden. If you also notice, I wrapped my controller with white vinyl from 12 inch skins. I think this just finishes the look and makes it look as a complete showpiece for when I DJ. So this also matches my white DDJ SX that I did in a previous video. So check that out if you're interested in seeing how that look. So this is gonna be my wedding white look DJ furniture for the DDJ Rep 7. Everything looks really good and I'm totally loving this. So this pretty much completes the build for the furniture. Hit me up if you want me to go over how I mounted this to my truss. Everybody's gonna be mounting this a little bit different so I didn't feel it was necessary for this video. So here's a couple pictures of what my finished product looked like with it turned on, how it looks, and let me know in the comment what you guys think about this build, if you have any ideas for a build or if this is something you're interested in. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe. There's gonna be plenty more DDJ Rep 7 videos to come. So make sure you guys stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.